Turns out I don't like cupcakes. And neither do the Bruins because UCLA had to grind their way to a victory here against the Stanford Cardinal as we rock and roll here with Locked On UCLA. Hey, everybody. I am Zach Anderson, the Oxhammer. Thanks for tuning in as the Bruins able to eke this one out against the Stanford Cardinal. And yes, despite what you may have not liked the title, the cupcake game, whatever it is, the point remained the Bruins had to run the Cardinal off the three-point line, had them shoot a low percentage, and get them into foul trouble. And while the Bruins did a couple of those things late in games, it was most importantly Stanford's ability to score in the paint, disrupt UCLA's offensive ability, and a weird quiet game from Tiger Campbell, Amari Bailey, another quiet game for him against the Cardinal. And and UCLA had to eke this game out despite trailing by as many as eight in that first half, trailing by five in the second half, 50 to 45, before eventually grinding it out to a 73-64 win. On the same night that Purdue goes on the road to Maryland, yes, that same Maryland team, UCLA, had practically blown out by 40, eventually winning that one by close to 30. Purdue lost at Maryland, which only makes that UCLA win look even better. Just a night after, what else? Alabama loses to Tennessee. And how many Pac-12 teams have beaten Tennessee this year? So the Bruins standing, and especially with the new early reveal for the top 16 teams coming this upcoming weekend, UCLA somehow went from, are they even a a three seed after their loss to SC and Arizona back-to-back, to somehow, despite only having a win against Oregon as their most impressive, earn themselves a much higher standing. So let's let's look at this game against Stanford, a game where the Bruins saw Tiger Campbell look like, especially on the ESPN broadcast, everybody was confused. Campbell gets benched in that first half and didn't start in the second half. He did hit a clutch three, did hit a big bucket late, and Campbell ended up seven points on seven shots. And normally he's playing 35 minutes and Mick Cronin can't find a way to take him off the floor. But this time you have the likes of Campbell struggling. Amari Bailey, who in the first game, I believe, against Stanford, about seven turnovers struggled that game. And Bailey, his first true struggling, his first his first bad game since he's returned from injury. Bailey in 16 minutes, 0 for 5 from the floor, a turnover, a personal foul. We'll see what this means, if there's anything that we didn't hear about. Is he you know, hurting? Was he ill? I didn't really see too much after the game about it as we're quickly reacting to this one. But again, Clark, 16.6 rebounds defensively. And then Jaime, Hawk, Jaime Hawkins Jr., 26 points, 9 rebounds. And Singleton just being that veteran presence coming off the bench. A team with UCLA, despite only turning it over seven times, they looked in shambles at times because one – they weren't able to get it down low. Without Nuba as a backup post, Etienne may have shown why Mick Cronin doesn't trust him on the floor when Bone is in foul trouble. And Bona, despite some big-time blocks in the paint, could not stick on the floor despite his aggressiveness defensively, him eventually fouling out in 25 minutes because Stanford outscored the Bruins in the paint, were able to hit some timely threes. In Stanford, plus 12 in the paint, And the other thing, despite the Bruins getting the Cardinal in the foul trouble, UCLA missed nine free throws. There was a point in this game, they were like four for 11. They were, what, 10 for 19, despite missing making their last six or eight in a row. So they were able to get to the free throw line, but not take complete advantage in this game. And for Stanford, they only got there six times, turned it over 14 times. The Bruins couldn't turn any of those turnovers into easy fast break buckets, but again, it was the Jaime Hawk that I don't know why I'm struggling to say his name tonight, but Jaime Hawkins Jr. show for UCLA and the Bruins, who by virtue of everybody else losing, you could say whether it's the Pac-12 down or the Bruins just proving that they're a very consistent team and get that 14th win at home, 22 and four overall, that 13th win in Pac-12 play. And the Bruins just slowly, even when it's a a slow first half, a bad first half, which we've seen a bit too often in conference play and throughout the the season at times this year, the Bruins come through, they have that run in them. And against the Cardinal, they had had two. One coming out of the break and one to close the game to eventually shut down a Stanford team whose best player only played 27 minutes in foul trouble and scored six points. They 
Couldn't stop Raynaud because he had 12 points, 10 rebounds. Their big seven-footer was able to make some shots in the paint with Bonus struggling in foul trouble. Ingram, who is the reigning Pac-12 freshman of the year with 13 points. And then Michael Jones, who is a sharpshooting grad transfer, as you heard probably on the broadcast, the first ever grad transfer in Stanford's program history. 15 points, hit some timely threes. But of all the players who played 25 minutes or more except for Ingram, all the Stanford players had four or more fouls. So again, the Bruins are able to pound it in the paint. They just couldn't take care of it at the free throw line where if they made some more shots, could have put this game away a lot earlier than they could have. But still, you know, maybe I took them lightly. I've seen Stanford in person. They played extremely, they played a lot better than what they did tonight. So I didn't really know what to make of Stanford. The Cardinal, they came to play fresh off that big win at home against Arizona. Proved that maybe they're a little bit better than their record shows, but why the Bruins are so tough, tenacious, down the stretch, why they can prove themselves to be a winning combination where Campbell, who can't come off the floor at times, wasn't even on the floor. We forgot to talk about Dylan Andrews, who only had three points and an assist, but was crucial when he was asked to be on the floor in the first half. But Clendon late in the game, hitting a big triple and then getting to the free throw line despite missing both, having some big minutes late in that game. And Mick Cronin, seeing some guys, we saw put on some guys on the floor that we normally don't see late in games in a tight game at home where the Bruins, obviously, they're clearly in the tournament, but would love to have this one and not blow that winning streak at home and blow that chance at a one seed. Lenardi still says they're a two. I might think they're more of a one. The Bruins able to do just enough despite the inability to get down low and score in the paint against Stanford, who is very long and lanky all the way around, one through five. But the Bruins got the job done. Cal should be a much easier test coming up on the weekend in a late Saturday night tip against the Golden Bears, where the Bruins should win that game after the Trojans just trounced Cal. They should win that game, should the Bruins, by about 30 points. They should. At least 20 points. Stanford got their second look at the Bruins and played a lot better But yet, UCLA, despite no production from Bailey, practically nothing from Campbell. And Bona was showing spurts, but couldn't stay on the floor. And the Bruins, with a lack of depth, get some bench scoring, getting three from Andrews, three from McClendon, two from Nuba, and 13 from the bench in a game where they needed every one of those points. A nice, solid evening for the Bruins to find a way to get a win. Sometimes you're going to play your worst night. And the Bruins played pretty poorly. Stanford came out, give them credit. They did what they needed to do, and despite some of their players not playing their best, they gave the Bruins their best effort and nearly knocked them off in Pauley Pavilion, which many teams this season have struggled to do. Some warning signs for the Bruins why they might not win a championship this year, but they also had that championship pedigree intensity down the stretch from a Clark, from a Jaime Hawkins Jr., Campbell's big buckets, and everybody else with Singleton hitting big shots. That is what proves the Bruins or will be tough to beat, but they're not going to get all those hometown calls on the road in the tournament where they're not playing at home and at neutral sites. So we'll see how the Bruins play, but we're excited. We'll get that eight clap in a moment, but we'll tell you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. At the midway point, we are, of the NBA season as they head into All-Star Weekend. So, hey, you know what? Let's get excited because, hey, why not be excited for FanDuel? They're the now, you know, one of... Locked On's sportsbook partner. We've got it all with FanDuel. And you just all you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Because with FanDuel, you can get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 back on your no-sweat first bet. That's bonus bets if your first bet does not win. Betting on the NBA, money line, point scores, or three strained. All you have to do is get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If you don't win your first bet, at fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official betting partner, sports betting partner of the NBA and with us of Locked On. I'll admit it, it was no cupcake. I don't actually like cupcakes. I'm more of an ice cream and a brownie and a cookie and any other treat other than a cupcake. Funny enough, and neither do the Bruins. They don't like cupcakes. So I will admit, maybe taking the Cardinal lightly, but maybe the Bruins did too. So I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, signing off on this reaction. Hands up, eight clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you.
out. See, LA, UCLA, fight, fight, fight. This has been the immediate reaction of Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.